Hello, everybody. Welcome to part four, which is the iNaturalist field portion of our training. And I'm glad that you've gone this far. I'll show you again how to use the iNaturalist app, how also to post from seat to iNaturalist using my phone. So again, here's a look at my phone. One of the first things that we can do, as I just talked about in the presentation, is you can use the Seek app to post directly to iNaturalist. So let's say that we wanted to do that with our garlic mustard example. Well, again, we go to our, we click on our green button here to get into the camera function. And remember this, uh, this warning that comes up, just hit continue. And we'll take a look at that same garlic mustard that we had posted before. And again, I'm getting that class dicots example. So now trying to get at the leaf shape and look, I'm having to change my angle until I get that species ID. I can then take a picture and remember that I have recited it. And now I can go down to this post to iNaturalist part, click on that. And you see that it is um, giving me the different options now as to how I want to post this. So it tells me that it shows me the date here, shows the location of where I am. I have changed my geo privacy to open, but I can choose private if I want and not actually put where my GPS is. I can also choose open uh, if I want to actually post to where this is or obscured and obscured basically gives you a, a range or a basic gist of where you are on GPS, but not an exact location. So this is a good sort of like in between, between private and open. But let's just say I want to post this. Now this garlic mustard is wild. It's growing, um, it, it's growing in an area that is, that could be cultivated, but it came here by accident. And I actually got to pull it out. But uh, you can just post to open, to choose to open. I can also choose to, to say whether it's captive or cultivated. In this case, it is not. It is just infringed on this, this part of the mulch here and is, and is wild. It was not put there on purpose. So I can choose no, and then I can choose to post to iNaturalist. Hit that button and it'll take you, this you know, may take up to a minute. And if depending on the connection that you have, you know, may, may take a little while. So you'll just see the circle kind of going around and Hopefully we'll eventually post, but, and now it's posted. I hit okay. And now I have contributed whatever that was. And in fact, now I've recorded this garlic mustard, uh, mustard officially from Seek to iNaturalist, which feels good. I've contributed to a citizen science project. So just now if, to show you my phone, I'll get out of this app here. And let's say I want to now use iNaturalist itself. So I'm kind of going through all my apps. I'm looking for the iNaturalist app. And you can see down here on the right, it's that green bird again. And with the white background, I can click on that. And you can see that all of the different observations that I've made in the in the past year, and I can look at uh, cool features like the year in review. And look, you see how this garlic mustard that we just posted, it's now in my record. It is now an official post on iNaturalist, which is kind of cool. But let's just say now I didn't, I knew what garlic mustard was, you know, I've got a good post for it. I, I, I feel pretty good about my ID techniques, or I think, it, you know, I just don't have, don't want to use seek or don't want to use that live function. I can also use um, iNaturalist to observe and report as well and not have to use seek. Say I just want to use and post directly to iNaturalist and just forego seek altogether. So what you can do is you can click on this observe function uh, once I am in the iNaturalist app. So let's just say I want to do that. It then turns my camera or the iNaturalist app basically now looks like a like a camera function as if you're you know, taking a picture with it or whatever. So this is the garlic mustard that I've been taking a photo of, but let's just say now I would like to do this with something else. Let's, let's go look at another, let's go look at another plant and let's see if we can take that over here. So don't mind me moving over here, moving my computer. Let's take a look at what I've, what we have planted here. Now I'm going to look at a cultivated species and we're, we'll, we'll take a look at that. So now let's take a look at this here. You may recognize this as a daffodil, you may not recognize it, but iNaturalist can certainly help with that. So let's say that I want to iNaturalist now take a picture of what this is. 
I want to get my computer out of the screen here. There's a couple of different ways you can do this. You can call, you can use what is called like a habitat shot of it or just, you know, a far away picture. But oftentimes what you, what I do and what I find is takes a good photo is by sometimes even using your hand or providing some sort of contrast is good and taking a look at different features. Maybe sometimes you want to take a picture of it and, and have a look at it from the top. Maybe a side angle view of the plant may recognize it um, as, as, as a good observation, but let's, let's take a look. Let's take a picture and see what this is. So let's say I, I think I've got something that I, I can get an ID with, with through eye naturalist and see what that looks like. Even with my hand in the picture, it is okay. So let's take a picture of it and see what it takes us to next. So I can then now use the next function on it. Let's hit next. And now I can look at what the next screen will look like as to what I saw. So as to if you hit that function, what did you see? I can hit that part and that is where to go from. So once you have that picture on, let's go back to that again. You'll see this screen here and you'll see that that you know, it's what did you see? It tells me the date, where I've recorded it. Uh, my geo privacy is to open, but remember that this is something that was planted. So I want to change this from captive to yes. I do not want to post something um, that, uh, that is planted or cultivated and not record that. So I'm going to change that to, to that. Um, and then as to what it is that we have seen, It'll then, once you click that, go to different options and take a look at what it is that we are posting. So in this example, I have, it is giving me different options. It's saying that it's not fully confident to make a recommendation as to exactly what species is, but it will give you a list in order of what it thinks that, that, that it is. So if, you know, for the first option and that, that it gives you is a wild daffodil, I can click on that to learn a little bit more information about what it is. I can compare pictures. I can look at its distribution. I can get more info on it on iNaturalist. So if I clicked on that here, it'll give me a little bit more info on what it is. It'll tell me about it. I can see who's posted on it. I can, I can click on these various links and actually learn a little bit more about it. I can then go back to that original one here. So let's go back to that original, those recommendations. Typically, you want to choose the top option and, and see and post that because that is what it's most confident in. It, I'm now selecting for wild daffodil. And of course, it's not wild, but I have, I have noted that in the captive and cultivated section, but it is a daffodil. And then all I need to do is hit share. It'll take a second to upload and then to sync. And now I've recorded an observation. And again, if I want to go back and do this with, with other species, I can go directly into iNaturalist to do that. You can see all the different ones that I've posted in the past. You know, for example, I found um, an example of spotted wintergreen, for example, that I took a picture of. And you can see that, uh, you know, an, an identifier also confirms that I saw spotted wintergreen on this day 15 days ago um, and, and confirms what iNaturalist thought. And you can see all the different ones that I posted. Anytime you see this red dialog box up here, it means that an observer or an identifier has come in and basically confirmed what we have seen, which is pretty cool. And that is a great way, great learning tool. I can then, you know, explore what's around me. I can, I can learn about the things I posted. Identifiers can interact with me now. And it's just a great way of interacting with a larger community and, and more tools that you can use. There's so much more that you can do with iNaturalist and to engage with the community. But as part of this tutorial, I just wanted to get you guys started. If you come across a cultivated species versus a wild one or an introduced species versus a native one, this just shows you the different mechanisms around that and how to go about that. So hope you learned a little bit 
little bit more. And if you want to continue with this tutorial, there's one last section. So now you're all excited. You've got Seek and iNaturalist uh, at your disposal and you want to do something and contribute. The next tutorial will teach you about a project um, through the Invasive Strike Force through Lower Hudson Prism that you can get involved with right away if you want to contribute to a larger project, become a citizen scientist with a specific goal and focus. So tune in if you want to learn more about how to participate with our with our challenges and become part of this project uh, and you know protecting and preserving local biodiversity. So hope to see you at this. Uh, let's talk to you in this next tutorial. Thanks for listening.